and men can do beautiful lyrical letters, but white guys, no. 19, you like missed your apprentice phase, it starts when you're six years old, you can't do it. So that was, you know, I've been, like, I'm close to 20 years behind, you know, on this thing. But that was just my ignorance. Um, but I did wanna, I did wanna get up in the same way. So I was, do I had been doing a lot of stuff with spray paint, but just spray paint stencils. Then I started making bigger stencils of, of like my Andre the Giant imagery, and when I saw that stuff in New York after I'd started the project, I, you know, first started to make bigger, bigger stickers, and then I started making huge posters, and just started taking it bigger and bigger and bigger. Walkie-talkies. 
if it's a spot where I can't climb and bring the pace at the same time because it's too awkward when I get to the top, I just drop the rope down to someone and, uh, and have the thing, and they tie the rope and, uh, and rush to the bucket and, um, and then hoist the stuff up. Sometimes when I've been out by myself, I've actually just tied the stuff on the ground and then climbed with the rope, letting a little slack out at a time so that when I got to the top, I could pull it up. We've gotten pretty good at climbing. Start with picking up a little bit. It's not quite there yet. It takes about five minutes. The way you do it, you know, you slap it onto a surface, you put the poster on. Then you brush over it to push all the air bubbles out, so there's paste on both sides of the poster, and it um, you know forms a nice seal and it dries clear, and it helps protect it from the weather. But this stuff is really designed for indoor water use, so it's not 100% water proof. If it rains a lot, you know, there's a hurricane or something, it's got the poster will eventually come off of the surface here is the magic ingredient. It's a uh, golden harvest soft gel. It's uh, an acrylic polymer. And of all the different additives I've tried, this is the strongest. But this is like 40 bucks right here. So if I mix half of one of these into there, which is about the optimal ratio, it makes the price of that bucket of paste go from, from uh, $3 to $23. I never know when I'm going to get arrested to shut down, and, and uh, you know, I want my spots to last as long as I can. I, I, I used this when I was younger, and I didn't have any money, and I had a lot of time to go regulate and redo my spots, and I just went cheap. You know, or if you have somebody that works in the art store, and you can scam this stuff out the back door or something, you know, great, but this is the best. I've had one spot in New York that's been up since February 96. It's just like the icon face, you know, like like the one that guy's holding there. I call that the icon face because the original sticker was the one that says uh, Andre the Giant has a posse 745. This uh this this misfits um knockoff is kind of a hybrid of uh, that old school face, the scuzzier one with um then the new then the new one was the uh yeah, hey look, there's a stick of the same image as this guy. What I did at House of Blues was similar to what I do on the street in terms of uh, the, the imagery that I put up and, and the process of putting it up there, you know, repacing up. But when I'm on the street, I have to worry about the police coming. And so I work really fast when I'm on the street. In fact, you know, it takes me about a minute to put a poster up, but I had to pace myself during, during the House of Blues show, but that was great because it's so much faster for me to put posters up than for, say, an aerosol artist to do a piece that I was able to do several pieces during the course of the evening um, in that I started off with certain images and I would layer them and then put more up and rip them and put more up. Um, you know, I think I... I started off with, with maybe some of these uh, posters, these This Is Your God posters. These are actually offset printed. A lot of posters I screen print. What I do with these is I make a bunch on thin paper that I put up on the street, and then I make some on thicker paper that I sell. And this is the, um, one of the images for a show I just did called This Is Your God, which was about people's obsession with uh, fame, money, stardom, all that sort of stuff. Consume with discretion, even obey. You know, what, one of the things I love about street art is you never know how long this stuff is going to last and people interact with it. So this is an example, and I think I put some of these up too, but me photographing one that's already been ripped up and there's other, there's other posters in the area. Um, 
you know, all sorts of scuzz. And I photographed that and turned that back into a poster again, sort of saying, like, I tried to rip it down, but it's back in a new form. Can't stop the giant. <laughs> You know, and then I also, in when I was doing the show at House of Blues, tried to replicate the process of natural decay by just ripping the stuff myself, but getting at least a look and, and conceptually communicating to the audience the idea that pay attention to the stuff because it might not be here that long, and that's part of what makes life interesting. You know, so things are constantly evolving and changing. A lot of these posters that I put up are are, uh, are scarce, one of the clients, so. Um, you know, when I put them up, and then I put other stuff over them, and that's it. On, it's, uh, it's, it's like, there, there you have it, you know, and, and uh, hope you enjoyed it, because it's gone now. And so, you know, I put some of those posters up, and then maybe I put up, I mean, sometimes I just put up stuff with no imagery, it's just like, like wallpaper, just like a pattern, just to give it some texture. Johnny Rotten. From the Sex Pistols, and I peeled that one away. And uh, then, and I know that at some point I had up, I think some, maybe some, uh, some hip hop imagery, like maybe some Public Enemy stuff, a couple of uh, Flavor Flavor images, I think. And then, um, and then finished with a huge Andre the Giant as Gene Simmons with the blood dripping down and the makeup and flames and everything. <laughs> It's just the Scratch of House of Blues piece, but everyone really likes it. They're calling it the Gene Simmons collage piece. There's this idea that because it was like for a performance and that it's sort of street artish that I don't really want it anymore because I'm always giving my art away to the street and um, like, no, I want it. <laughs> I'm keeping it. I'll put it up somewhere else. try to do with the people I, I choose is I choose them because of um, either their you know positive or negative contributions um, depending on whether it's a dictator or like a, a musician or something some people I'm trying to uh, put put on a pedestal because I think that they that they inspired me like like Chuck T or, or Johnny Rodden or Jim Master J then other people George Bush, you know, I'm saying, like, look at how these guys get into power. Sometimes I've taken that whole strategy, which has been used by advertising and propaganda forever, of take something, make it seem important, make it seem powerful, use emotionally potent phrases and images to get people's attention, to, you know, indoctrinate them, um, and, and, you know, to at least get them to, uh, to you know, feel like, Wow, this is big. This is bigger than me. Or pictures I got from magazines of you know, the Sex Pistols or the Clash or 
misfits or whatever, and I cut them out by hand. So it was knowing that it was going to be in one color ink and that it couldn't be too, too detailed because I was hand cutting these paper stencils that I'd make t-shirts with. You know, the same way, the same way that I cut a stencil, you know, like this is, this is a, is a pot. It's hard to tell when they're just like the stencil itself. You know, there's his face, his mustache, but this is just a few simple shapes. What you spray it out it really looks like. And here's uh, here's um, Snoop Dogg right here. Um, Go Shizzle. This is this beat, Snoop. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is an image of Sid Vicious, very similar to one of the um, one of the first ones that I did when I was like 15 or 16. <laughs> so it shows how much I've progressed. 18 years. Um, so this is a little bit of like mist of um, spray adhesive to keep the stencil flat. Keep the spray coming out on the coffee. Interesting thing about Sid is he's the most famous guy for the Sex Whistles, probably because he killed his girlfriend, but he actually did the least. He's really funny how images everything, because he had the punk rock image thing so down, but he uh, he didn't really do much. He was a terrible bass player, but I think that that's really funny. I kind of like him. I guess, I guess that what I'm into is I'm into both playing into the cliches of different genres, and at the same time, sort of making fun of them. Um, you know. is that um, if you if you integrate it in, in a way that's tasteful you know, I guess that's subjective to me it's just common sense you if, if a building is abandoned and it's in a condition where they're going to have to put work into it as soon as someone occupies it anyway that I don't feel like I'm lowering the property value or, or, or making anyone's life uh, unreasonably miserable. And then, as far as city property goes, I, I look at it like I'm, I'm a taxpayer, and as long as I'm not covering a stop sign, so if someone runs a stop sign and gets killed, you know, that, that if I use the back of the sign or an electrical box, that that's legitimate use of the public space. The project is designed to put something out there next to advertising that's a humorous, uh, provocative alternative to it. People now say, because I've, you know, I've got clothing and stuff, that now it's just another ad. And you could look at it that way, I guess, if you, you want to be a hater. I mean, I've always emphasized the reclamation of public space as a, as a, a forum for free speech. My advice to anyone that's going to put, put posters up or do any sort of, any sort of street art is um, you can get in trouble, so be careful. Um, and try to minimize the trouble that you're going to get into by doing places that you could have some sort of semi-legitimate excuse for doing, um, like any sort of uh, boarded up windows on a story. You say, oh, well, you know, when they fix this up, they're just going to take the plywood down anyway. Um, the good thing about wheat paste is when it's wet, you can take it down. So if a policeman comes up when you put the poster on an electrical box or something, Say, oh, I'm sorry. It's a promotion for my band. We're just we don't have any money, but we're trying to we're trying to make it. Uh, I'll peel it off. You can peel it off while it's still wet. Get your hands wet. I've had to take my sweatshirt off and and wipe the paste off to please a policeman, but I didn't end up getting arrested. So um, you know, you might think you're punk, but don't act like a punk when the cops are around because that's the quickest thing to get thrown in jail. It's rewarding, but it can be high stakes. Thank you.
Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything anyone could possibly need to know about that. My name is Shepard Fairman. that a number of times, is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> um, and did you um, view that video before you went out uh, looking for uh, tags or uh, illegal postings of um, artwork? Yes. And uh, <clears throat> what did you, what date did you go out and look through uh, the city to find if there were uh, posters of this kind elsewhere? Well, there were several days uh, when we, my team and myself went out uh, searching for these, uh, but the search began on May 22nd. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, approximately or exactly, did you know how many uh, posters did you find throughout the city that were on property where there was no consent for? Approximately or exactly? Uh, I believe it was 14. Okay. And did they all have a common image? Yes. And what was that? Uh, well, most of them had the common uh, obey giant face somewhere on the poster. Uh, and there were a couple of uh, misfit posters as well. I can't find the obey giant in that misfit face if yeah. it's there. But uh, there were several misfit uh, faces posted as well. And the Obey Giant in, in the posters that you found around the city is this identical to what you saw in the video? Yes. Um, <clears throat> did you um, investigate and view a video of an interview that uh, the defendant, Chuck McBerry, uh, conducted with a uh, local TV? Yes, on the 19th of May. <coughs> and uh, who's in the video? Uh, Mr. Ferry and a reporter, uh, Ronnie Dahl. Okay, and that's with Channel 7? Yes. And did you um, familiarize yourself with that interview before going out? and looking around the city for illegal tagging. Yes. Um, I'm going to have that marked. And uh, uh, have you viewed this multiple times since you burned it to a disk? I have.
State of Michigan versus Jeffrey Allen Turner. Finish charge and count one false report or threat of bomb, harmful device. Appearance is correct. 